straight ahead this morning. There's a lot going on on this wonderful Saturday. We've got some events to tell you about, including one honoring a local hero. Plus, Calhoun Liberty Hospital receives another setback. Why it's back to the drawing board for hospital officials. And choo-choo, the Amtrak train made its way to Tallahassee, stirring up some excitement along the way. We'll tell you all about it. And Brittany Beatty is here and we'll have a full breakdown of today's weather. Can we expect sunshine all day? Well, she'll tell us these stories and much more to come this Saturday. Live from the WCTV studios, this is the Good Morning Show. Coverage you can count on. All right, you're looking live at our tower cam. Looking over just outside the station here, it's a gorgeous day outside. Good morning, everyone. I'm Charlene Crispel. It's 8 o'clock right now, and we'll get to you new, your news stories in just a minute. But meteorologist Brittany Beatty is here with a quick check of our weather because it is gorgeous outside, Brittany. Yeah, we have a chilly start outside, but not too bad, like I mentioned. And of course, lots of sunshine already. So that being said, of course, we're not dealing with any sort of rainfall on our radar here. But we are still dealing with a few areas of patchy fog, especially in some of our eastern counties out in a Taylor County. Perry is down to a five mile visibility in Homerville in, in Georgia, down to a four mile visibility, five miles in Bainbridge, as well as into Moultrie, Georgia. So depending on where you are, especially away from those larger cities, you may run into a few areas of patchy fog, but that is going to quickly burn off by the late morning hours and these temperatures are going to continue to increase. Now, right now we're dealing with 45 degrees in Tallahassee, as well as out in a Perry and Live Oak, Homerville as well. Mid 40s generally all through North Florida and South Georgia, even out at the coast, Apalachicola, a few degrees warmer though at 51 degrees, but everyone in the area will follow suit rather quickly, just thanks to plenty of sunshine, some calm winds as well, and throughout the rest of the day, the temperature is going to increase again back into the mid 70s, and that 70 degree weather continues into next week. We'll have a full breakdown of the forecast coming up in a few minutes. Back to you, Charlene. Thank you so much, Brittany. Well, beginning this morning at 8.30, a 5K will be held in memory of 2nd Lieutenant Justin Sisson. This footage is from last year's event. O Sisson was a graduate of FSU and was killed on June 3, 2013 in Afghanistan. Money from the 5K will help fund an ROTC scholarship in his name. And at 9 a.m., registration for the Lincoln Trojan Sepsis Challenge 5K will get underway as well. Sepsis, sometimes known as blood poisoning, is often the body's deadly response to any kind of infection. The condition develops when the body overreacts to an infection. It accounts for half of all hospital deaths, and it can also strike anyone at any time. That 5K starts at Tom Brown Park. Registration is $35. Later on today, the American Autoimmune Related Diseases Association will make its first stop in Tallahassee. It's all to kick off Autoimmune Disease Awareness Month in March. Registration for the public forum is $10 and includes lunch. It kicks off at 9.30 a.m. and ends at 3 p.m. today. It will be held at the Four Points by Sheraton, that's downtown Tallahassee, on Tennessee Street. And with all that gorgeous weather, if you're going to be near Wakulla Springs, head out to the lodge and enjoy a crawfish, a crawfish boil. Rather, There will be some crawfish, gumbo, and king cake, all for just 20 bucks. Not only will Bill the Sauce Boss Warden be cooking, but he will also be playing some live music beginning at 3 p.m. The event will go on from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., so be sure to check it out. Well, there's a few things that you need to know news-wise. We now know the name of a person killed after a Friday morning crash in Jefferson County. FHP says it happened around 7 near the intersection of West Washington Street and Main Avenue. 20-year-old Jose Hernandez drove off the road and hit a tree. The car flipped and hit another tree. 23-year-old passenger Robert Croft died at the scene. Troopers say he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Hernandez was, has serious injuries. Well, the plan that Calhoun Liberty Hospital submitted on Thursday has been rejected. The Agency for Healthcare Administration required them to draw up a plan after a patient, Barbara Dawson, died in the hospital in December. A hospital spokesperson says Aga turned down the plan, saying it's not detailed enough. The hospital now has five days to, to submit a new plan. They must put those changes into action by March 1st, otherwise pay face more fines and possible suspension from the Medicaid program. 
The roadside memorial for Corey Jones, a Florida man killed by police, was found burned. Family members visited the memorial Thursday night, as they do every month. A driver passed by the site Friday morning, they say, and saw it on fire. Jones was killed last October by a Palm Beach police officer as he was pulled over on the side of the road. The teddy bears was wet. You teddy bears, everything was wet Everything here. was wet, like it was raining already. Is there any reason that you think that somebody would want to burn this? I can't even answer that question. Police do not believe the fire was intentionally set. Jones's family plans to rebuild that memorial. Well, two students, two Thomas County students rather, are facing charges after school administrators found a pellet gun on campus. The high schoolers attend Thomas County Central. Deputies say a student noticed the gun Thursday and reported it. A school resource officer found the gun in a parked car. Thought it was just a, though it was just a pellet gun rather, the sheriff's office says every incident is handled with caution. We take this seriously, and the school takes it seriously, and I'm sure every parent out there that has a child in school take it seriously as well. I cannot stress enough how proud we are of the students who reported this, and, and it goes to show that, that students are concerned about their safety and what's going on on their campuses. The car's owner says he was practicing with the gun Wednesday and accidentally left it in his car. He and another student were charged with weapon possession inside a school safety zone. They're suspended from school during the investigation. Well, a passenger train rolls into Tallahassee the first time in over a decade. Hundreds witnessed the train pull in. There were cheerleaders, bands, and a rowdy crowd who enjoyed the event. Our Chris Grove breaks down the day the train came back. Whatever their reasons. I think Tallahassee needs more. But it sure is more fun. I think it's been too long. The people of Tallahassee are excited that this could become a permanent fixture. Even Johnny Cash sang about the train coming around the bend from a perspective of Folsom Prison. You know, it's train travel can be exciting educational and even romantic. After more than a decade, a passenger train with the folks of Tallahassee all aboard. While they think they can, it'll be up to the feds to make it happen. Incredible show of support. We want them to know that the citizens of Tallahassee are ready to get this train rolling again and they're ready to bring their business to them. Because not everyone flies and not everyone can drive long distances and not everyone has the same budget and just so, so many reasons. The proposed restored rail line travels along the Gulf Coast. It would be the first passenger train in North Florida since Hurricane Katrina. Reporting in Tallahassee, Chris Grow, WCTV Eyewitness News. Everyone really excited there. Well, the inspection train started in New Orleans and it will end in Jacksonville. Pretty cool there. And after the train left Tallahassee, it stopped in Madison. Viewers Pat Lightcap and Sherilyn Pickles sent us these photos. Dozens of people waved signs and showed their support for Amtrak. City and county leaders met with Amtrak officials and encouraged them to restore rail service to the area. And that brings us to yesterday's online poll question. When we asked you, would you take Amtrak service out of Tallahassee? Well, 85% of you said yes, while 15% of you said no. Seems like a whopping percentage of you want that train back. And all the people out there want that train back, too. There was a lot of people out there. So it was really cool there. All right, well, the time now is 8.08. Coming up, we'll get your brain pumping with this morning's eye-opener trivia question. But, Brittany, it's a gorgeous day out there. It's been gorgeous most of the week. Can we keep that going? I think if you like the weather yesterday, I think you're going to enjoy the weather today. Plenty of sunshine in store. Now we still have a chilly start this morning, so you may have to grab a jacket before you head out. But dress in layers because we are going to quickly warm up into the afternoon. And like I mentioned, a little more sunshine out there and a little more of a humid feel to the air too. I'll explain in full detail what you can expect for the rest of the weekend coming up right after the break.